I saw this question on Reddit and I was like, oh, I want to solve it. And I printed it out so it's kind of hard to see. I'll put a link to uh, the Reddit thread down below. I didn't look at their answers. I don't want to see. I want to solve it myself. So I don't know where this came from, but it is week 71. So a uh, maximum trajectory length. A ball is thrown at a speed V from a zero height on level ground. At what angle should it be thrown so that the distance traveled through the air is maximum? You will have to solve something numerically. Right there, you had me at numerical. Okay, so let's just let's just look at the big basic problem here. Here's the ground, and then here's my ball, and I'm gonna launch it with some velocity v at some angle, and it's gonna go through the air like that. And and the question's not how far did it go, what's the maximum distance? The question's what's the maximum path length? Um, and that's interesting, right? Uh, so let's just, you know, if I if I launch it straight up, it's easy to calculate the path length because it goes up and back down. Um, but other than that, I, and, and I guess straight horizontal, the path length would be zero. But other than that, you'd have to integrate uh, ds along this path, um, and which would be a parabola. And, you know, a lot of times we don't really look at the trajectory x versus y. We always look at uh, x versus t and y versus t. But they said do it numerically, so I'm going to go ahead and do it numerically. Um, so let's just say if the ball's in the air, uh, let's just write down all of our equations of motion. So I know that v y zero is going to be v. I'm going to use their. I'm going to call it v zero. They called it v, but I'm going to call it v zero. V zero sine of theta. V x zero is v zero cosine theta. And then so my y equation of motion is going to be y equals y zero plus v zero sine theta t minus one half g t squared and then my x equation is going to be x zero plus v zero cosine theta t constant acceleration constant acceleration in the y direction zero acceleration which is constant in the x direction and then if x and y are both x zero and y zero are both zero then i can just i can get rid of those um, and then i have x is a function of t y is a function of t so here's my plan I'm going to make, number one, make a trajectory. So I'm going to break this into small time steps and then just plot the position of x and y for a bunch of different times. So this would be, you know, xi, yi. And I'm going to write it as a vector. You can actually write this whole thing as r, which I'm going to do, is r0 plus v0 t minus one half or plus one half g t squared where g is the vector zero negative nine point eight zero i'm gonna do it that way and I, I didn't i didn't think this through <laughs> maybe you can tell um but then if i have some uh, r value right here i can find the distance to the next one so i'm going to say uh delta r it's going to be, let's say, R2 minus R1. And that's going to be a vector displacement. The total distance, we'll call S, is going to be, I can just add, it's going to be the sum over the magnitudes of these delta R's. I think that'll work. Okay, number one step is just get this Y versus X, which is pretty easy. Uh, number two step, I'm going to have to use like a, I, I want to, calculate the distance for some particular path and then I need to make that a function so that I can vary the angle theta and then plot eventually I'm going to plot um, s as a function of theta that's what I want okay let's just do it sometimes <clears throat> you know Mary Poppins said a job once begun is a job half done so we just need to start that's not what really she meant but you know what I'm talking about Okay, let's let's get it done. I'm not going to make a visual. <clears throat> I'm just going to plot things. So let's just make a graph. G1 equals graph. This first graph is going to be uh, x versus y. x title is x. Uh, y title equals y. And then the width, 500, height, 250. Is that big enough? Not 50, 250. Let's make that one bigger. That's big enough. I like I like it big. Uh, and then the graph F1 equals G curve 
color equals color dot blue. Now it's a numerical calculation, so for numerical calculations we need numbers. So I'm going to pick a number. Uh, V0 is my um, V0 mag, let's call it V0 mag. And let's say 10 meters per second. Um, theta is equal to 45. That's a good one to pick, 45. 45 times pi divided by 180. Uh, okay, now I need r equals vector 0, 0, 0. So r is the value that I'm going to be changing. v is also the value I'm going to be changing. So I'm going to say v equals vector. I think I just need v0. I'm just going to write v0 as a vector. I'm not going to change it. v0 equals uh, v0 mag times vector cosine theta sine theta 0. g equals vector 0, negative 9.8, 0. And I think I need t equals 0, dt equals 0. 0.0. Let's put 0. 0.01. Okay, now I'm going to make my loop. So I'm just going to plot the trajectory. That's all I want to do. So while r dot y is greater than, than or equal to 0, right? so that'll make sure I get back down to 0. Do the following. Number 1, calculate the position. Right? So I'm just going to type in that equation. r equals r0. That's what I want. I want this to be r0. I don't want to change it. R, this is not a, a normal Euler method because I, I have the equation of motion. R0 plus V0 times T plus uh, 0.5 times G times T squared. So I can calculate the position. I don't need to do a numerical calculation to find it. I know the position. That's the position. Uh, now I'm going to plot. Now I'm going to update time. T equals T plus DT. Now I'm going to plot X versus Y. F1 dot plot r dot x, y dot x. I think r dot x, r dot y. I think that should work. I didn't save it. I ran it. Oops. And that was a bad mistake. r dot y. Let's save it. Um, path, length, projectile, motion. R is not an object. I have R0. R Why is R not an object? It's, it's a vector, right? Let's put this at point 1 and print R. Let's just see what happens. Didn't do that. Undefined. So R0 is a vector. V0 is a vector, G is a vector, print R0, print V0. Let's just try that. Okay, print of those. R equals R0 plus V0 times T. Oh, I never, I do have T. Plus 0.5 times G times T squared. Let's, what if I get rid of this? And then I better do this. It will never get back to zero. So let's say while t is less than one. I feel dumb because there's something stupid going on here. That works. So g is vector zero negative. So with that, let's see, minus or plus 0.5 times g times t squared. Did I put gt maybe? Someone saw my error in the, and someone still sees error because it's not working. What the heck? There's something wrong with, oh, plus. Did I not have the plus? Okay, now it's working. I think I just didn't have the plus. I was just excited and going so fast. Okay, so get rid of this. Get rid of that and do this. While r dot y is greater than or equal to zero. It didn't do it. Oh, and a y. Because that the loop was a problem. I never have r in here for this loop. So I have to say r equals, uh, vector, let's put 0, 0, 0. Now it works. OK, yay. Now I want to calculate the path length. So this is fun. So let's say this, s equals 0. Now what I'm going to do is I want to 
find dr, right? But for dr, I need r old. So let's actually call this, uh, let's say r old equals r. And then I, I move r right there. Now I'm going to calculate dr. dr is going to be r minus r old. Now I'm going to say r old equals r. Now sometimes I get problems here because when you make these connections between things, sometimes it changes both the variables. Um, now let's just plot. Uh, let's just, it's at point 0.1, so it's not too big. Let's just print dr. Let's just make sure it's working. Print dr. Let's just see. I'm, I'm not positive of myself. Um, so the drs are changing. Good. I think it's I think it's working. So now I can say s equals s plus mag dr. And then that will add to the whole path length. Um, and I do I am going to have to check this. So let's say print s equals s and it should be in meters. Not not in meters. Okay, so there's my path length, and I get 12.28. Okay, really quick. I don't trust myself, so I'm going to check it. I'm going to shoot it straight up where I can calculate the height and calculate S and then compare it over here. So let's go back over to the paper really quickly. This is a problem. If I launch it straight up with the velocity V, how high does it go, and what's the path length? So the path length would be twice H. So I can do this. It's going to go up and then back down. So I want to find this height h. Um, you can do this with work energy, or you can also just use uh, v final squared. V final squared is v initial squared minus 2 g delta y, right? That's one of the kinematic equations. I think it's fine to use that. Uh, and so we're launching it straight up. So I'm, I'm trying to solve for delta y. The final velocity at the top here is zero. So I get 2g delta y, which is h, is v0 squared. Uh, delta y equals h equals v0 squared over 2g. So s is going to be twice that, 2v0 squared over 2g or v0 squared over g, which is going to be, um, let's just check, meters squared per second squared over kilograms. No, that's meters per second squared for g. So I do get units of meters. OK, good. So let's calculate that for straight up back to the computer um, because I don't trust myself. So let's put theta at 90 and then print s and then print uh, theory and this would be v0 squared so I'm, that's going to be v0 mag squared divided by g and I'm going to put this in parentheses because again order of operations scare me divided by the magnitude of g which is a scalar okay let's see Oh, wait. Oh, this is <laughs> it's a parabola. Okay, it's still straight up, okay, because we're going from 0 to 10 to the negative 15th. And I got, t okay, theory is um, smaller, but I had a small, t a large time step. Let's move this time step to 0 0.01. I think it's working. Okay, I'm pretty happy. That's a, that's a 0 0.01. Let's make a smaller time step of 0 0.001. I think we're good. Okay, good. Seems like it's working. Next step, change the angle and make a plot of the path length as a function of angle and we should see a maximum. Uh, let's do it. So that means they're gonna make this whole thing a function. Um, let's just say, uh, change this to theta and s. And then I'm going to make a function def pro path. And I need to pass, I'm going to pass it both the velocity, which I don't know why, and I'm going to pass it uh, the angle. So v0 theta. 
And then I'm going to indent all the stuff. And now I don't need the V0, V0 mag, let's call it V0 mag. I don't need that. I don't need this. Um, I should say uh, theta in degrees. Yeah, so this is going to be uh, theta. I'm going to put times pi divided by 180 theta times pi divided by 180. Because I'm going to pass it theta in degrees because I like to plot things in degrees. So um, that's fine. So R0, V0, G, T, D, T, R, S, R old. That's all good. I don't want to plot this. I just want to do it. And then I'm going to return S. So let's try if this indeed works. Uh, I already know what it should be. So let's say uh, I'm just going to put what ProPath. ProPath. That's a weird name. Pro Projectile Path is what it stood for. I'm going to pass to it uh, V0 of 10. So 10. And an angle of 90. Because I already did that one. And let's print this out as 10 squared. And put this as 9.8. Even though I already knew what it was. So let's just see if it works. I already know the answer. I want to make sure my function works. Because sometimes functions don't work. Okay, so it's working. It's working. So now I can do the following. I can say uh, v0, 0 equals 10. I don't, I'm, I'm just don't want to reuse the name. Uh, theta equals 0. d theta and this is in degrees, 0 0.1 degrees. Now I will say while theta is less than 90, because remember I'm using degrees, uh, I'm going to calculate the length. So S temp is going to be pro path uh, V00 theta. I use theta twice, that's bad. Theta 2, theta 2. I get scared. It scares me when I do things like that. And when I'm a bad programmer, I scare myself. So that's the, the temporary path length. I just calculated it. Uh, so now I need to plot that. So f1.plot data, data2, stemp. Now I'm going to increase the value of theta. Data2 equals theta2 plus d theta. And that should be it. I'm kind of scared. I, never, I haven't saved this in a while. I should probably save it. Save. Run it. Okay. We got, we got a maximum, right? So we got a maximum right here at 56.6 .6 degrees. And that's the answer. 56.6 .6 degrees is the maximum path length. Um, that's kind of interesting. Uh 56.6. Let's just do, I want to do one thing. What if I change the speed? It should not depend on the speed, right? So let's change the speed. We'll get different values, um, but let's just change this to 5 and see if we still get 56.6 degrees. Somewhere around there. It's, it's, it's somewhere around there. Um, okay, let's make this a little bit better. Let's plot this from uh, theta is 46 to theta is 66. So theta is 46. And let's just go to uh, 66. That way we'll kind of zoom in on that, that region and get a better value. And there it's a little jumpy, that's kind of interesting. So let's make d theta even smaller. And do it. Okay, so it's a little jumpy, that's kind of nice. But this 56.5, somewhere around there. I think you could get a, a better value, but I think in this case, I'm pretty happy with that value, and I really enjoyed that problem. I want to find more problems like this. So I'll give you a link to the Reddit post that I found this. I will give you uh, a link to this code if you want to use it. And thanks for playing around along with me.